ladies and gentlemen, for your patience, and welcome to Gavin. We're delighted that you could join us this afternoon for our production of Bye Bye Birdie. We hope that you enjoy the show. At this time, we'd like to remind you that we do have a no-camera policy in this theater and would appreciate it if you would not take pictures or make tapes during the performance. Also, our principal, Mr. Hall, has asked me to ask you to please remove your hat if you are wearing one as part of our hats off to Gavin policy. Finally, the aisles will be used for entrances and exits by the actors, so we ask you to please keep feet and purses clear. And now, without further ado, may we present Bye Bye Birdie. <laughs>
Yes, this is he. But sir, don't you realize the disastrous effects this may have on the morale of the American teenager? No, sir, I'm not suggesting the boy doesn't want to go in the army. It's just that... No, sir, I was just thinking that... Two weeks from today, at the induction center, he'll be there. Rosie, this is the end of the Al May Lou Music Corporation. Conrad Birdie is going in the Army. And Faithful Secretary is hereby submitting her resignation. Huh? I just wanted to say goodbye, Albert, darling. Lots of luck. Rosie, you can't leave me. Not today. Of oh, all days. My pills. Where are my pills? I take what I'm overwrought. Here. Not so much. Break it in half. You're 33 years old, Albert. You can take a whole aspirin. <laughs> I am not 33. I'm a long way from 33. I won't be 33 until tomorrow. Water. It's no use, Albert. My mind's made up. I've been with Al Lou eight years now, and as you well know, I've been a lot more than just a secretary to you. Rose, those were moments of madness. Well, between the moments of madness and the office, I've put in a good 90-hour week. And for what? A $5 raise in 1954 and a bottle of our page last Christmas? Promise her anything, but give her our page. Yeah, but not a sixteenth of an ounce. Besides, I want something more than that. Rose, if you're referring to anything of a more permanent nature between you and me, I'm not ready for it. Besides, there are religious differences. Spanish is not a religion. <laughs> and if it's part of the company you're after, it's a note of that, too. Al May Lou is me, Mama. Any change in it would kill that wonderful woman who bore me. Nothing could kill your mother, Albert, except maybe a silver bullet. And it won't drop poor old Lou, either. He loved you, Rose. I loved Lou, too. Sure, he was warm, he was loyal, he was lovable. But he died six years ago, and besides, he was a wire hair terrier. Anyhow, I don't want part of the business. This is something much more important than that. Rose, if you're going to discuss what I think you're going to discuss, I am in no mood to discuss it. There's nothing to discuss, Albert. Conrad Birdie's going in the army. I quit. There's nothing you can do but give up the business and go back to college and get your- Rose, I am up to my ears in debt. Conrad has a $50,000 guarantee, which I can't pay, and I've just taken a severe overdose of aspirin. Albert, this may be your very last chance.
But I'm sure that by 1973 or 74 at the latest, we'll be able to... What's that? Something that's going to push that date up a few years. Pick a name. Pick what name? What are you talking Never about? Never mind, I'll do it for you. McAfee. Kim McAfee. Age 15, President and Recording Secretary, Conrad Birdie Fan Club, number 2748, Sweet Apple, Ohio. Mary, would you give me Sweet Apple, Ohio? The number is capital 78820. And call me right back. Now, wait a minute. What's going on here? Who is this Kim whatever her name is? Kim McAfee, Albert, is what's going to send you back to college with the biggest hit song this business has ever seen. It's called One Last Kiss. I never heard of it. Well, you haven't written it yet. When you do, when that one last kiss is from Conrad Birdie on his way into the big cold army for two long years, and when he gives that kiss to one of his fans, chosen at random from 1,200,000 hysterical teenagers, it'll make Mr. Birdie the hottest soldier since Joan of Arc. Rose, I'm beginning to see it. We could cut the record here in New York. Take that greasy bomb of playing your thief to Sweet Apple. Let him kiss the kid. Release the record. Oh, Albert, you make enough money to stay in college the rest of your life. Rose, it's wonderful. And I promise, as soon as this thing is settled, it'll be just the two of us, Rose, in perfect bliss. I'll get a job teaching English and, well, wait a minute, bliss, kiss, that rhymes. I wonder if anyone ever used it before. Now, what difference does it make? It'll sound great in the song. Oh, one last kiss, it gives me so much bliss. What is your dentifrice?
you've made up. Of course I'll still play his records, but things like the Pledge and the Counter Dirty Scream are past me now. You're giving up the Scream? You mean with Counter Dirty Scream? Please tell him you're not gonna go. Ah! Oh, Kim. Kim, dear, would you please get off the phone? I've got some calls to make. All right, Mother. Sorry, Ursula, I've got to hang up. You'll explain everything to the other kids, won't you? I do. Bye, Kim. Kim, are you sure? I mean, really, Kim. I mean, after all, are you absolutely sure? Positive. After all, I'm 15 years old, and it's time I settled down. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, mommy, mommy, mommy. I 
Cincinnati, Akron, Campbellsburg, Carruthers, Carrosses, and Sweet Apple. Departure time, five minutes. We have a lost child in the information desk. The boy is wearing a green sweater and a Cleveland Indians baseball cap. In Windy City Special, now arriving on track six. Track six.
gosh, where's our luggage? Well, girls, you better get down to the train if you want to see Conrad before he goes. Rosie, what are you doing? Carrying our luggage without any help from you, Albert. I'm sorry, Rose. I don't suppose a generous tip would make things up. Albert, just take your briefcase and go down to that train before any of those reporters talk to Conrad alone. You know what happened last time. You better hang on to it, Rose. Wait, I can't go. I have to wait here for Mama. Speaking of your mother, Albert, have you told her about dissolving Alme Lou? I couldn't, Rose. Yesterday was the anniversary. Of what? Lou! Six years ago, he was hit on 181st Street and Broadway by a loaded beer truck. Yoo-hoo! You don't suppose that's Mama. It's either her or the all clear. Yoo-hoo! Sunny boy! Mama! Subway. Mama, I told you, take a taxi. Taxi schmaxi. What do I need with taxis? I'll leave the taxis for my successful son. A mother can ride crowded in a dirty subway full of foreign people. <laughs> Wouldn't give you a seat if your life depended on it. But what's the difference nowadays? A mother's lower than dirt anyway. Here's the money I saved from not taking a taxi. Buy some candy with it. Who's she? Mama, you know Rose Alvarez from the office. <laughs> this is Rose Alvarez? Pretty little Rose Alvarez. I can't believe it. Rose, what happened to ya? You had a sudden shock or something. <laughs> Excuse me, Albert. I think I'll go see if Conrad's here. By all means, Miss Alvarez. Look at a sunny boy. How nice she looks. It's a wonder to me some older man doesn't snatch her off. A presentable matron like that, with brains and a few dollars? What a catch you be for a convalescent. Goodbye, Rose. Goodbye, May. Call me Mrs. Peterson. Mama, what I wanted to discuss with you is sort of about Rose. Um, maybe you'd better sit down. Why? I know my sonny boy. He loves his mama. He isn't going to say anything that would break her heart. <laughs> now, dear, what about Rose? Well, Mama, it's about Lou, too. Lou, where are you, Lou? Struck down by a beverage I consumed faithfully for 32 years. <laughs> what about Lou? Well, Mama, Rose thinks, and I agree, that I should give up all my Lou. Mama! What's the matter? Nothing is the matter. You've just killed me, that's all. Lo, I'm coming. I'm on my way up. Mama, you don't understand. Rose thinks. I mean, I think. I mean, look, here's some money. Take a taxi home. The subways are too crowded. Nothing's crowded for a mother. I'll go during rush hour. That's the worst time. Wait a minute. How many blocks is it after all? Only a hundred and seven? I'll walk. Mom, walk! Enjoy yourself, son. Take care. Wear your heavy coat. Be careful crossing the street. Keep your money on your inside pocket. Wear your rubber a hot lunch. Albert, I thought you were going to break it to her gently. Well, Rose, as a matter of fact, I didn't tell her at all. Um, no, she was so upset about my leaving, I thought I'd better wait. You mean you didn't? He's coming, he's coming. Conrad's coming. Conrad's coming, Rose. And we can't let him know this for his Thank you. 
a real pal like a sister, but it doesn't mean a thing. That 18 carat diamond, it was just a friendship ring. I'm quite upset about this. 
I've already had several headaches and a nosebleed. Hugo, I believe you're actually jealous of Conrad Birdie. Me? Jealous? I'm the opposite of jealous. I'm very jealous. And I have every right to be. Kim's my steady. That's just it, Hugo. I'm your steady. Well, I may admire Conrad Birdie as one of my far distant and unattainable ideal. But I pity you, Hugo. And I don't care how kind and ordinary you are. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, can we not just say that to make me feel better, are you? Oh, you wouldn't know. I mean every word of it. Conrad Birdie's just a fling. A study is forever. Yes. 
pomp and circumstance that I welcome you to our fair city and present you with this 14 karat solid gold key so generously donated by the men at Sweet Apple Brassworks. And I present this key to you, Conrad Birdie. Ah! He said it! He said the name! What happened? All I said was Conrad Birdie. Ah! You girls don't stop it. I can't finish my speech. Who cares about your stupid speech? We want to hear from Conrad. Speak to us, oh beautiful one. Tell us how you make that glorious sound that even now, in anticipation of it, has reduced me to a snarling, raging, panting jungle beast. You gotta be sincere. Edna, what's the matter? You gotta be sincere. Mr. Birdie, what are you doing? You got to feel it here. Cause if you Edna. feel it here, well then you're gonna be honest to
Maria, we have all this mess cleared away before Conrad comes down. This mess, as you call it, Kim, happens to be my breakfast, and I intend to enjoy it. Now, your father has the right to enjoy his eggs, Kim, but I'm sure he won't mind if we just quietly start clearing away some of these other things. I know the house is a bit hectic this morning, but Kim has gone to a lot of trouble to fix the special breakfast for Mr. Birdie. <laughs> I want to make sure everything is ready, waiting for him when he comes down. After all, he is a national figure, and I want to show these.
you do other things? I tap dance. I figure I can help you with the secretary stuff, and you could help me get into show business. Hold this. May, can you help Swanee River? It's my favorite selection.